Hello and welcome to the Connotation Points video snark. I'm making my way through Born at Midnight by CC Hunter. If you haven't seen the other videos, you might want to do that before jumping into this one or else you might be confused. Links will be posted below. Chapter 31 Lucas tells Kelly that the tracks aren't too far from the outer property line of the camp and that they need to crawl through a hole in the fence to get to them. He then asks if she's still afraid of him, but, but Kylie lies and says that she's just thinking about that snake. Lucas assures her that he can smell a snake, and he's confident that he's fast enough to stop it before it could hurt her. He then asks if she's any closer to figuring out what she is yet. She says no, and that she thinks that she really is just human. She then cuts him off before he can say anything further and says that she's sick of hearing about how her mind isn't like other humans' minds. She then likens the mind-reading thing that they do with guys staring at her boobs, too. As they continue along, Kelly notices a bandage on Lucas's arm and asks if he gave blood, too. She's honestly kind of weirded out about how normal that he asks about the fact that he gave blood in order to help out the vampires. Lucas explains that the vampires need human blood and that they can't just survive on animal blood alone. He says that it's the same thing as donating blood to save a life, except that this is more of a nutritional thing rather than for medical emergencies. And then Kylie has to think about how, despite the fact that Della is her friend, in her mind there's two different Dellas, the one who is her friend and the one who is a vampire. Personally, I think that Kelly is doing it to try and protect her mental state. Everything will be okay so long as she never actually acknowledges the fact that these people are all supernaturals. It also reminds me of, one of these days my kid is going to figure out that chicken the animal and chicken the food are the same thing. Lucas says that all of the vampires are required by the other vampires to set up a donation pool for themselves, so he's surprised that Della hasn't asked Kelly for blood yet. But this drags up some instances Kelly has observed Della being in with some of the other vampires, including Chan. And who wants to bet that Della is getting a lot of heat from the other vampires simply because she refuses to ask Kelly for even a little bit of blood? Although my guess is that if this does become relevant, Kelly will need to have it spelled out for her. But these thoughts make Kelly think that she is a bad friend. She then changes the subject and asks Lucas what it's like to change into a werewolf. He likens it to getting a massage after a hard workout and says that it's a lot scarier to watch than actually going through it. He also has strong base urges when he's not transformed, but when he's a wolf, those thoughts are at the forefront of his mind. Furthermore, he does have heightened senses, but they get more powerful the closer it is to the full moon. They climb through a hole in the fence, and then they have to cross a stream. Lucas warns her to be careful, but as the saying goes, pride cometh before a fall, and splash, down Kylie goes. Lucas laughs at her, so she splashes him, and then he kisses her, because we probably all saw it coming, and she doesn't hate it or try and push him away. If anything, Kylie kisses him back and wants even more from him, but she pulls up away when she hears voices, and he says that they're not coming that way. They both agree that they shouldn't have done that, but when he says that they should forget about it, she says that she doesn't think that she can. She then asks about the track, so he points them out on the other side of the stream. As she moves to look, she realizes that her impromptu bath has left her shirt and bra soaked and practically see-through. He offers her his shirt to wear, but she says that he just shouldn't look. Lucas says that he wouldn't look, but that he can't make the same promise for the boys who are coming now. He then literally dresses her like an infant, but it's all good because he calls her beautiful. And guess who is in the group of boys? Trey. Can't wait to see how this is gonna play out. Ugh. Chapter 32 Trey comes over to where Kylie and Lucas are and asks if this is Derek. When Kylie introduces him as Lucas, the boys do that you're in my territory thing that guys do whenever a pretty girl is involved. Ugh. Kylie quickly breaks it up and says that they need to get back. As they're crossing the stream, Kylie can't help but feel like Trey is staring at her and Lucas the same way that Kylie had been staring at Trey when he showed up to the party with that arm candy. The second that they can no longer see Trey, Kylie instantly puts him from her mind. She then thinks about the kiss and wonders if it means that Lucas doesn't remember her, which, no correlation? She's also kind of upset that he wouldn't remember her. They walk back to the camp in silence, and Kylie tries to build up her nerve to straight up ask him. Instead, she goes for a more indirect approach and says that he reminds her of somebody. He says that he gets it a lot and thus promptly ends the conversation. At the camp, he says that he has another hike to lead. 
Kylie takes off his shirt that she'd been wearing over her own, which has since dried enough not to be completely transparent. He apologizes before he leaves, and Kylie is even more upset about it. Later, when Della comes into the cabin, Kylie decides that she has to stop beating around her own mental bush about what Della is and what she's drinking. She then offers Della some blood. Della says that her parents and her old boyfriend would call her a monster, but Kylie says that it's not true. Miranda comes in, and they agree that they're both going to give Della blood. The girls are about to go get the blood draw cleared with the camp counselors when the pedophile piano teacher Toad churns back up again. I had almost forgotten about that at this point. Almost. Why did they have to bring it up again? Della says that they should just turn the creep into the police, but Miranda insists that the things he does could easily be explained away by things like helping a student to find the right piano key. Ugh. Where's Olivia Benson when you need her? Although Miranda says that he's at least given up on teaching the piano. And then, you know what? Forget about the pedophile. Let's hear the dirt about how Lucas drew Kylie's name that morning. So Kylie tells her friends everything. Miranda says that she wants to be kissed like that, and Della says that she should let Perry kiss her. As they're laughing and joking around, Kylie's dad calls. She does the smart thing and turns the sound on her phone off and ignores him. A couple more days pass and things are going well for Kylie, but then she wakes up in the middle of the night and she's not in her cabin. She appears to have been transported inside of Soldier Dude's memories, and finally, a wild plot seems to have appeared. She's somewhere really hot and desert-y. She hears a woman crying for help. Kylie tries to tell herself to wake up that none of this is real, but she can't snap herself out of it. A deep voice in her head that she doesn't belong to her says that there's no time only just for Kylie to understand. Kylie then finds herself going towards the house where the screaming had come from and a voice that doesn't belong to Kylie starts issuing orders. The man that Kylie is currently inhabiting kills a man who was attacking the woman and then he himself gets shot and dies. Kylie is then ejected from the body and realizes that she was instead of soldier dude. Which, duh, I don't know who else it could have been. But as she looks across the room at soldier dude, she suddenly feels empathy for him for the first time since he showed up. She finally wakes up screaming. Della and Miranda are there saying that she's having another night terror. Kylie reassures her friends that she's okay but leaves to go to Holiday's cabin since the counselor had told Kylie to come see her whenever she needed it. As Kylie is walking across the camp in the middle of the night, she gets a sense of foreboding around her. There is completely and utterly zero noise. And then somebody grabs her from behind and warns her that she shouldn't have been walking out in the middle of the night. Oh no. Chapter 33. The person who grabbed Kylie was not some evil vampire or even Lucas. It was only just Sky, the other counselor. However, she quickly steps back from Kylie the second ghost are mentioned and shows Kylie to Holiday's cabin. Later, Holiday seems to think that the ghost showed Kylie his last moments because he's now being blamed for what happened. Which, why would you ask a 16-year-old girl who was a stranger to help you with that? I mean, if you're gonna talk to somebody, why not a politician in Washington or something? or even literally any adult. Holiday seems to think that this isn't going to stop. She goes on to say that ghosts sometimes don't get the idea that doing stuff like this is scary to the living. She tells Kylie to go get some rest in her cabin and gives her phone number so that Kylie can call her next time instead. Later, Della and Miranda bring her lunch, although Della insists that it's because Kylie gave her blood earlier while teasing that Miranda's blood didn't taste that good. They also say that Derek wanted to speak with her, but that he wouldn't say what it was about. They then also explain that a vampire and a werewolf got into a physical fight earlier and that it was exciting, and Perry came to sit with them at lunch, which made Miranda happy. Also, the FRU guys showed up again. They didn't hear what was said, only that they were talking with Holiday over something. Kylie tells them about how she overheard how the FRU wants to close the camp down unless something stops happening. But enough of that. Della says that Kylie got another email from her dad, which puts Kylie off from her lunch. She knows that she's been avoiding her father, but she can't help but feel like he's been avoiding her too. And then we jump back to mentioning how Lucas went into the counselor's office and how he looked super mad about something. After Della and Miranda leave, Kylie spends more time moping around. Lucas eventually shows up because the entire chapter can't all be of Kylie reflecting of the plot. He quickly brushes off her attempt to bring up the FRU and gives her a kitten, one that's almost identical to the one that she thought he'd killed when they were children. Kelly is surprised that he would remember something like that. 
Lucas then says some vague yet scary sounding thing about not being able to stop his dad, and then quickly mentions that he also got Kylie things like a litter box and kitty food. Kylie then tries to invite him in under the guise of setting up this stuff for the cat, but Lucas says no, although Kylie gets a feeling that he isn't just talking about the cat. He says that he doesn't want to get Kylie involved in this, that she's innocent, although he says that her offer is tempting. Kylie repeats that she never said anything to him about the FRU. He then surprises her and says that she somehow gotten cuter than when she was six. He kisses her and then leaves, refusing to answer Kylie's question if he's leaving or not. Later, the vampire FRU guy barges into the cabin and demands to know where Lucas is and that he can smell that Lucas was there. Kylie admits that Lucas had been by earlier, but then he left. Kylie insists that Lucas is a good person, but the guy isn't listening and just leaves. Holiday says that she'll talk with Kylie later, and then Kylie thinks about the incident with Lucas and the cat when they were children and decides that new information makes this scene even more relevant. Thanks for listening to my book snark on YouTube. If you enjoy my videos, please hit that subscribe button. I post a new snark video every Monday. Don't forget to check out my other video snark of Stalking Jack the Ripper and The Plan. If you've already seen those, then you can head over to Tumblr for my main book snarks. And if all of that is somehow still not enough for you, then you can become my Patreon supporter for just $1 a month and read a bunch of bonus snarks that aren't up anywhere else. See you next week, guys. He offers her his shirt to wear, but she says that he should just look. <laughs> the girls are just about to go to the blood draw. <laughs> Later, the vampire FRU guy barges in.